We were young kids, really. I was in my early 20s. And my dad was like, hey, we need to get you to buy a house. And I was like, It'll, there's no way. We're students, we don't have any money. He got this realtor on the case. And he called us up and he said, you know what, Jeff, I think I found the last $100,000 house in Seattle. And it was, it was this one. And it was this tiny little 1940s era war bungalow. Not, I well, wouldn't, wouldn't even call it a bungalow. It was a shack, literally built on cinder blocks and phone books. And there was a chicken coop in the back, but it was so charming and the lot was really big. And essentially, when I graduated from school, I, we got a couple of credit cards and I convinced my schoolmates to come help me build this. And, and neighbors too. Well, you know, my neighbor across the street it was a community project. Well, I was in architecture school at the time. Okay. And so I did a lot of experimenting on the house. And a lot of it doesn't exist anymore because it was so poorly done. <laughs> and then uh, right before I graduated from school, I, I kind of designed this, uh, uh, this addition. And we really didn't know the, the design that I did structurally kept the interior walls. Well, the original house, the little 1940s shack, my wife and I still lived in. Okay. And then, so the nature of this design was an addition off of the back of it. And so we could still live there and then work on this house. So, and then kind of Airbnb, the concept of Airbnb yeah. started to develop. And because of the nature of the courtyard house, we were really able to sort of segment it off and create a lot of privacy for everybody. Okay, so I, I here, here, yeah, so this is, this is really a, the, the courtyard concept of the house. And the, the original house was really over here in the portion that you, you can see, you can see these, these expressed columns here through the steel. So you can see the column here and the side column here. They're on these 12 foot bays that go back. Really, we have these frames in there that free up all the interior walls from being structural necessities. And so we had all this flexibility with what we did inside. So this line, this beam right here, this is where the, the original addition started. And this from this back was our 1940 shack. Right back, just this. Yeah, square. from here, from, from here back, and I think it ended right there. And so, yeah, then this is, this is our residence here. Yeah, oh wow. We really love the interior, exterior relationships here. And so we've got, you know, our patio out here that we spend a lot of time in, even in the winter. It's been really fun, actually. We, we've had some snowstorms and people get stuck here. I've hosted some cookouts. We all kind of gather down here and make a fire and grilled food over there. It's been very memorable. So again, there was, the, you, you tore out a cat. The shed was where? Okay, the, the, the chicken coop was back there. <laughs> the chicken so was the chicken, chicken coop was back okay. there. That was, that's all gone. That was all okay. gone. Okay. So we started building from here back. Okay. And then, so this section that goes down, not the second story, but just the first story. Okay that goes down and then L's over. Okay. That was the original addition that we did. And then when time and money allowed, we would just kind of build it out. And then we had children and turned that into sure. my daughter's yeah. room. And, and then, you know, we did this bigger addition in 2008. And so we have three distinct spaces. That's a, another Airbnb up there. Oh, wow. And then there's a rooftop sauna and a rooftop deck. It's, you know, sometimes I get really surprised because you know when I'm building this, I'm just kind of it's I'm right in front of me, and then I'll I'll stand back and be like, wow, that is really expansive space. This <laughs> just keeps going. Or like I was cleaning the roof over here not too long ago, and I'm like looking out. I was like, wow, that is a lot of <laughs> house I've sort of managed to piece together over 25 years. It just happened, yeah. just organically. Yeah, yeah, a friend of mine suggested I go to Remodelers Anonymous. You know, he's just like, you just can't stop. <laughs> but it is, I mean, I just love doing it. It is my favorite thing to do.
But it's only used. It's not like it's all, only well, see, used that's the, yourself. That's what I love about growing a business. You know, and I don't need to, you know, have all this extra space, but I w we want to build the space. So it's a very symbiotic relationship there. Do you have, it's, are you allowed to, it's like ADU or what's the... Yeah, this yeah. is, yeah, exactly right. So it's AD, ADU, it's all, yeah, above board. So accessory dwelling unit. Accessory yeah, dwelling two? unit, yeah. Well, so, so this one, this one here is an accessory dwelling unit. That one is, is essentially a room that I rent out of our house. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that one isn't as big that's more for two people okay. okay and then we turn this into an airbnb and really decided that we enjoyed so much of meeting people and sharing our, our home with them and, and it was a great it's um, income running it's well. great income yeah. yeah and you're able to like offer something that's urban but at the same time it feels very rural it does the way there's a lot of privacy screening this is essentially a principle of Japanese garden design, oh, okay. is, is we wanted to create our own views. So for instance, wh where you are right there, I, you know, I was looking at a, 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 a picture on a Northwest beach. You know, we had these rocks and these sea pine trees. And I was like, you know what? I could make that in my yard. So this is, this is kind of our garden. And again, a lot of this is also done to create privacy between the spaces. Uh, both sound and visual. So you can be up there and, and not look down into this space. And so it really was very deliberately composed in that manner. And then this back here too. So we oh, created wow. this yeah. rooftop garden. Yeah, the, the roof of this. Yeah, the roof of this. Yeah, it was like a chicken coop. Oh. So when you're in there, you're looking out on that and through that and you, you don't feel like you're, you know, you're looking you know, into some big fence and screening. So, so each really view is considered. Precisely, and even like these doors, you know, like what does this look like and how do you visually entice people through the space? Yeah, and then back here is the Japanese garden space for this back unit. This really evolved very organically, much more organically than a lot of my design work, really because I was building it for myself. There was no real timeline and I was salvaging a lot of the material as well and so a lot of it was was really designed and built just like this you know I would I would you know mock something up I would sit back and look at it and determine if I liked it go inside and I was really struck with how powerful the round window actually is when I was laying this out and I was still kind of a fresh architecture student you know there's like in Japanese architecture they use a tatami mat as really like one of the guiding sort of principles for laying out the spaces and then in Western architecture it was more like the golden mean and this really reminded me of like the golden mean but to be fair and honest as I was laying it out myself I, I used more of like the four by eight plywood and, and, and drywall dimensions because I was also trying to be just really efficient. Mm -hmm. And also materials you had. Right? Materials I ha had, had, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so this round window I got at a salvage place for a hundred dollars or something and I was like, God, where am I going to use that? And so I, I, I determined this would be a fantastic spot for it and so much emerged from that decision. Yeah, I mean, I just love, you know, looking out through this. You know, the rectangle frame is so sort of constricting. So you put in the window and then you thought, okay, now I will, there's other shapes that come about. Exactly, like these triangles. Uh, yeah. yeah, up in here. I, I just, right now, I'm mean, just like, well, there's no way I'm going to just cover those. I mean, we need to open that up and see the sky, see uh -huh. the landscaping. And this is all part of creating these views through there. And I also wanted to create a lot of privacy. So we weren't really devising privacy through pulling of shades, but it was lo where we locate windows and how we can create privacy with vegetation and natural screening. You know, walls of bamboo out there. So the little window here too is, you know, I, I sat down here and just looked at that, that solid corner and just felt like there was a lot more opportunity there. And 
you know, spent a day really executing that is one of the best days I've spent. You know, I mean, it's just, if you're gonna design this, the detailing that would be required and the engineering, it would just kind of, for, for the, a house of this scale yeah. and budget, it just wouldn't work out. So, so it's only because it was your house. It's because it was my house and I built it and you know, it's just, I was able to get resourceful with it. I could, I could also just uh -huh. turn this down. Yeah. yeah. Oh. In terms of being very efficient with the space, there's a, a Rudolf Schindler house in Hollywood and he did these sleeping baskets. Like you, you know, his concept was you, you slept in fresh air. But it also created a lot of efficiency in the spaces. Okay. You know, where you're, if you're, I mean, a bed takes up so much space. It's not always fantastic to climb up on a ladder. Okay. This is a, a futon bed that I cantilevered out. Okay. So the anchor chain is attached to this, this beam up here and then here. And you can see this is just cantilevered out. You know, it's, it's, there's a little sense of peril sleeping on this, but. But you're uh, using a lot less stable. space. There's less space, you know, you're getting over, getting this over the, the tallest part of the ceiling. Um, and then I also just love the tension here too. What do you mean? Well, just to just, I kind of like to think of architecture and verbs a little bit, you know, pushing and pulling and, and the, um, the interactive. How much of this you did yourself, not only design and conceive, but also constructed? Constructed. All of it. The plumbing, the electrical, the hydronic heat system, a lot of the furniture, the everything. You know, in this space here, it's a relatively small, it's like it's eight, I think it's 800 square feet, and mm -hmm. it can sleep eight people. Wow. Believe it or not. We've got a loft bed up there. In here, we have another king size wow. bed up here in this loft and again you know seeing the seeing the view through there I, uh, it's, this place looks very very cozy almost like a boat or something yeah exactly so that is a touchstone for, for me i'm a sailor too and so i definitely you know think about yeah how to utilize these smaller spaces and yeah, I mean, I'll mention that to clients. They'll say, yeah, this space is so small. It's like, no, it's, it, if it was a bow, it would be huge. <laughs> you know, like, consider that. Yeah, and this, you know, is great. it's so fun. So yeah, I, I, I learned metal working in, you know, the shop furniture building in architecture school. So that was a very empowering skill to have. So you know, build these metal frames and this is Epe. It's one of my favorite woods. Because yeah, the staircase is really small and really narrow, but yeah, really small, really narrow. Yeah, yeah but again, it's it's boat like. Mm -hmm. And then this is cherry wood that I salvaged from when they demolished the um, the old Seattle Opera House. Oh. And I got a lot of this, and I used it in a lot of clients' houses too. But I had some of it here and built these little racks up here with it. Yeah, and this this little space, I just love it. I mean, sometimes symmetry is so powerful. Sometimes it's boring, but I think in, in a case like this, it's a, it's a pretty powerful use of symmetry. Yeah, it is actually, you're right. Like it's completely symmetrical, this place. This yeah, place it, it really is. But this framing of the view again is amazing. It's, I don't again, you, you have all this privacy from that without any shades or blinds. But I really also love the warmth of natural wood and materials, you know, and I love, like the Japanese term is like wabi-sabi, you know, it's the seasoning of this, and I really do love that. Even like with these tiles, these are Italian tiles that crack. I mean, I just love these hairline cracks in these. To me, it's just fascinating. <laughs> then this space down here, Again, you know, you kind of tuck it, tuck it under that loft there and it's stacking. stacking. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got, you know, these, you've got your garden out here. Is uh, this green is paper like in uh... Yeah. So, so the salvage, I, I'm, I'm friends with guys that work at this architectural salvage place and when really cool stuff comes in, they'll give me a call and they, they had 10 of these exquisite, Soji screen doors come in 
And so, you know, I got these and... And you know what's great about this is, this is just a very mundane door here. You know, nothing special about this at all. Just a vinyl sliding door here. But it's very efficient and very inexpensive. And then you put these in front of it and it really transforms it quite a bit. Yeah. Do they change with the light and do you get They sure, things? they sure do. Yeah, and again, it's just that sort of that, that, those different layers of transparency. So every day is like a new show, right? <laughs> exactly right. And the flooring here? What I love about this, this is almost cork in its most raw form. They're doing a lot of more elaborate designs with cork these days, but I, I mean, I just love it like this. It just looks like a pressed wine cork. And that came about just because, again, you found it, or you <laughs> salvaged it. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just if you find something, you're like, yeah, you got 110 square feet of this. It's like, all right, wow, Jill, just work. Wait a minute, I have a little. T I, I don't have quite enough, so I have to build some cabinetry there. <laughs> Honestly, that's how some of this stuff came about. Where I was just like, yeah. all right, I'll just... but it's being able to be designed and build your own house. Exactly right? right, and I think that the design benefits so much from having to sort of problem solve. So, I mean, so, I mean, little, you know, even just little details like this, you know, I remember having to deal with this, like this, this elevation change in this cabinet here. And I was like, how do I elegantly do that? And then you're just kind of holding pieces of wood up and you're like, wait a minute, what if I pulled this over like this, you know, and then details like this sort of emerge. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are, these are pieces I have in the shop, you know, and I'm like, okay, okay. here we can kind of do huh. some of this. And, <laughs> I, you know, I wouldn't have been sitting at a drafting table and conceived of that, I don't think. So again, so we had this, this very, you know, open format on the interior. We just had these frames uh, and then, you know, needed to find storage spaces. So, you know, that's storage up there. That's sleeping loft over there. This is when we did the addition for the, the newest Airbnb. Uh-huh. No, oh, too. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. This small space, yeah, I really covet a good entry. And so when we had this, you know, pretty, pretty small space here, yeah. it was like, how do I do this entry sequence? Because this was really a bedroom at one point, and then we converted it to this. You know, just doing the, the, the tiny little closet in this little bench area. I don't know, I just think it, you know, it kind of works. And then this was um, a, this tatami mat mm -hmm. and uh, this, this beautiful coca bola wood that I got from uh, one of my clients. Is that a door? That, uh, that's a door, yeah. Oh. So then that slides over here. Oh, wow, it's going. And then this is, uh, this is how we get to our house. Oh, cool. It's all connects if you need it. It's all yeah. connect, yeah. And then this is the access point to the other Airbnb here, through, through, through oh. that door. Okay. It's occupied right now, oh, so you can't okay. go yeah. there. Yeah. But um, right. I wish I could show you it because it's, it's right. really That's quite fine. cool. That's fine. Yeah, and then this is this is our this is our house here, and this is Hugo. Yeah. yeah and so then this I mean, th this kitchen's great too, actually. Kitchen's yeah. kitchen's great. I love yeah. I love to cook. This is our quote unquote garage. This is the gathering space for a good chunk of teenagers. Wow. So then this is, again, another sleeping basket here. So then we pull this, this ladder down. So for, is you know, and this is, a, this is just like an attic ladder. It pulls down like this. Yeah, and this is a, a king size bed up here. There's three girls sleeping up here this morning. Yeah, my 15 year old and her two friends. And so. So no garage. You'd rather have the space. <sighs> yeah, you know, it, this was like the main shop. Mm -hmm. And then when we did the, the second Airbnb, mm -hmm. we really didn't have space to listen to loud music or watch TV or have friends over and get rowdy. So we kind of need, you compelled to do this which forced me to clear out all of this stuff. I had big tools and lots of remnants from the years of projects here. And, you know, so I had to really go through and distill it all. And again, you know, one of the things here 
And the spirit of creating privacy without blinds and, and solid screens, the elevation changes in these half walls get you that. You could be at this table and someone can come out of the door and they, they don't see you. Yeah, I love these elevation changes. Can kind of give you a you real room quite, separation. You use it quite a few, right? I do, yeah. So was there an elevation change on the land that you went with or you just created it? The land had a really minor slope to it, which is actually kind of difficult to work with. And this is kind of boggy land too, so. But again, it was those problems that I think just created better design. Yeah. My other kind of fetish is concrete. Like to me, concrete is just the, like the plasticity of it and the durability of it and the value of it. And this is again, kind of like what I was talking about, a little bit of architecture and verbs, you know, you get this tension between materials and levels and the push-pull and, you know, I love to kind of, you know, pull this out and over like this. And so, yeah, this was all poured in place, you know, forms here and mixing bags of concrete and pouring this and you finishing this. And yeah, yeah. Again, I did all this stuff and this is like, you know, wabi sabi. So you just had one opportunity to do it, right? Because yeah, right. Exactly. So, so how was it? Were you kind of like trying to? When I did this, I was a little bit building furiously. I was working probably 12 hour days just trying to, you know, get us in here. So I didn't overthink stuff. I was just like, okay, this is what I'm doing right here. And, you know, this is, yeah, it, it, just a lot of gumption really <laughs> at that point and so and, and it, there were some mistakes that uh you know you just had to you know i remember there were some countertops and back actually i was pouring some countertops and it was cold and wet outside and i just the, the temperature was really affecting how quickly it was curing yeah you know and so it was cr it was cracking too much because i'd pour these on the ground yeah. upside down and then I flip them up because I, then I don't have to really do any finish work on these. So if, if you try to do all that too soon and it's, you know, it's outside curing and it's not cured enough, it just cracks. I don't like it when you get like circular stains. You can tell like, oh, there was a pan there or a wine glass there. And these don't really do that. You know, there's, there's a few minor instances of that, but for the most part, it just... It's beautiful. It's almost like this sort of material that feels like a rock, right? Uh, to yeah. Us, to us. That's why I just love concrete. And then this is copper right back here. These are these, these are yeah. some beautiful sheets of copper that I, I actually put vinegar on to kind of get a reaction out of it and then used a blowtorch, which kind of gave it that instant patina in a way. Yeah. But this stuff is so wild, like if the light is just so, it almost gets charged with light and then it almost kind of will glow in the dark. It's really quite amazing. I just love that. This too, you know, this is all reaction from heat and grease and cooking, you know, it's all, I just love that. You know, and then, you know, just like these, cast iron too, you know, and this, like this, I think one of this is, this is one of the finest uh, little industrial design products I've ever seen. I mean, I just, this is, this is just amazing. Look at this, you know, this is just so incredible. This little stop yeah. teapot. Yeah. Yeah. And the table over here too. So yeah, so this, this is a, a PSL Paralam. So, so really these are just a structural engineered lumber and you can see uh, my stair stringer over there is one of those. Mm -hmm. This is almost always, these are covered up with drywall or, or something. This is an efficient way to create a beam, you know, where you're taking, you know, the kind of young wood fibers and gluing them together into a structural beam or post. And you can see them over there in the, in the corner. And then there as well. And so I just love, I mean, I just love it so much. It, it captures, you know, the dark woods that are in this house and the, and the Douglas fir. And what I loved about this, you know, this sort of knife edge, on this, because I, I, I first built it and it just felt a little clunky to me. Mm -hmm. And so then, I, this was a kind of a, a, a technique I learned in the furniture class, is then I cut that bevel, not even really just, I guess it's not even a bevel, it's just a, an angle in it where it created that knife edge and I think just made the table. And this is again too, you know, there's all these voids in here 
because it's not meant to be finished material. So on this, I come over with like a two-part epoxy and I drip that in there and then screed it out. And then I have to belt sand it and then orbital sand it down. Like these little pockets will get filled with epoxy. And then again, you know, just kind of the custom size and shape of that. Yeah, really custom. I was thinking yeah. that too, like you're not gonna buy something. No, like there's, no way, there's no way. Yeah, but this is so great. I mean, we could have eight people will sit here. So, great. so is there a story behind the marble? So I, to be honestly, the story behind the marble is I just love it. And a lot of these are, are coming out of old school bathrooms, believe it or not. You know, they were like partitions in 1920s bathrooms. You take a little remnant like that and put it on the table. And this is what we do. You know, we cook this and this. This is how we eat our dinner, you know. And these go out here like this, you know, and if the food stays warm while we eat it. And, it, and you know, and it's just all very, it's all very natural use of these materials. Wow. Then, then sometimes we'll, we'll, we're gonna watch a movie in there and we'll just take that piece and we'll put it in there and we, or, or sometimes in the dining room over there. Oh, because you actually have another dining room. Yeah. That's true. To be honest, that dining room is mainly where I fold laundry. It'd because be, all this is so usable. It's here. so usable, yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is the living room. So this, yeah, like building that steel structure there that I, fed wire through and attached that fan to it was quite an adventure. Yeah. But I love it. You know, I'm up there on a ladder, a ladder that's suspended on, on a block over here and it's, the ladder's on its side and I've shimmied out there on that with that, you know, metal and I'm holding one end of it with my foot, the other end with my two hands and I'm sc screwing, that, screwing that on there, feeding the wire through there and attaching that. It was one of the more perilous <laughs> projects yeah. that I did. Also, I love looking back and just seeing the, all that wood and some of that structural, right? Like some of the, yeah, the beams. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so yeah, that, that one beam there, that's one of the beams for these frames. And then what we're seeing beneath there is when I did the addition for the Airbnb, that became floor. Upstairs is home? We could go upstairs, yeah. yeah. This is going to be more lived in up here, of course. Yes. Yeah, so this is my wife's office. This is where, uh, you know, laundry gets folded. And yeah. before we did the second Airbnb edition, this was a window that looked out. And so then now this is the new edition on the other side of this. And so I thought this was a kind of a nice solution yeah. to this. Just because that was, again, it was a kind of a big loss. It's like, oh, losing that window and that view. And it was like, well, what can we do? Mm -hmm. So yeah, in here, this is where I'm storing all my tools now. Okay. Yeah, these are my these are oh my, my tools. Wow, it's really come down. So. It's really come down. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is, yeah. This is you know I just again, I'm I'm just kind of a I have material fetishes you know I just want. <laughs> yeah. I just want. It's really good. And, and this is our bedroom here. It's also a little bit my wife's private sort of retreat space. And so we have one of these Soji screen doors here, which means she's not accepting visitors. <laughs> so she does that. It's like, leave me alone. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's a little, little ante room oh, yeah. in there. So. Oh, you're up here. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a good view of like the. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The property. Because you can see all, both of the units. You know what's really cool? Like yeah, this, this th yeah. This to us makes us think that we're in like a like a European city. You know, when we're just out here and we look out here on the you know the neighboring buildings and. Gosh, it's so nice. It must be hot out there. It's yeah. I think it's coming down. There's a kayak there. Canoe. Canoe. Yeah. Is it usable? It's a great. It's a great it? canoe. It's just like the it's best place I have to store it. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's really like a, pretty from underneath. Kind of... Well, the interior of it is these cherry ribs, and I was like, God, we should be able to look up <gasps> into that. So this was one of the little buildings I had the most fun designing and building. You're just transformed into a completely different space. 
different, you know, you, you are not in downtown Seattle anymore. And then you have the shower that right here, right? Yeah, so also has hot water, so I think it's my Seven. favorite amenity. When, when I don't have guests here, I definitely come back here and shower back here because it is just so fantastic. What is this? Okay, yeah, so this is a in the spirit of Wabi Sabi. I needed a grill back here, but I really just did not want to have some conventional grill. So this is a vintage Japanese kind of a clay oven. When I, when I bought it, it, you know, it had this sort of interior lining that broke out. And so then I just put in a Weber Smokey Joe grill into it. So it's a little bit of a hybrid, but it still works. And it's just so much more experiential. How much better, I mean, a rational grid in here would probably destroy the place, right? Yeah, and yeah. And this organic, this, it, it seems to emerge from the landscape to make sense, right? That's right, Nico. Yeah, I mean, this, so this tree here, this was this cherry tree that used to be here. We cut it down because it was dying, laid it down, became this nurse log. You can see, you know, all this stuff is growing right out of it. Uh -huh. I, I almost reference when you're on a hiking trail. Whenever I'm on a hiking trail, I see one particular area that just moves me. I always just catalog it in my mind and take a picture. I've got all these pictures from hiking trails where I just, I just love how the this, this space is moved through. And it's also usually very organic, but it's just also very humane too.